friends. Let's do this. Check some stuff. See how that is working. Give me just one second, friends. And we will get started in just a nanosecond. So we'll do that. All right, good evening. Uh, it has been a minute since I've done one of these Facebook Lives, and we're going to turn it into an episode of Everything is Marketing. So um, I'll banter with you for a second, then we'll kind of get into the notes, and then at the end of that, if you have questions, I will, of course, answer all of said questions. But before we do that, Marla, come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. dog collars and live video to podcast don't work very well, so let's get rid of that and let's get into this, all right? So if you're new to the page or you're new to Everything is Marketing, it's a podcast that we have been doing for a couple of years talking about things in the marketing world and since we've been spending so much time in Instagram and they just launched Instagram TV yesterday, not yesterday, last week, uh, I wanted to spend a couple of minutes kind of talking about what appears to be the hierarchy of that platform because I'm getting a lot of questions every time I put out a video I get somebody who's like hey what about this thing or hey can you help me with that thing and I'm absolutely happy to help you with all of those things I just thought I would condense it into essentially a week so this week we're going to do this tonight that will turn into a podcast that shows up um, on the MLive Media Group and in iTunes, iHeartRadio, Stitcher and Spotify I believe and then uh, we will do a video tomorrow that will show up on Facebook and YouTube. And then we'll do a whole bunch of pieces for Instagram specifically and Instagram Story, Instagram TV, all of that stuff. Sound good? Awesome. Again, uh, if you got questions, I do have them scrolling over here. I will answer them at the end. I'm just going to kind of plow through the episode and then we'll get to your stuff because I figure that's a really good way to do that. So let's do it, okay? All right, it is the Everything is Marketing podcast. My name is Eric Hulkerin, and today uh, we're jumping in to talk about the branches of Instagram. We're calling it the three branches of Instagram, or maybe three and a half if you're including Instagram Live. And we all know that the mothership is Instagram. But what we did last week with Nick Bailing was we talked about this idea of the hero image, that you should take the great shot and make that the centerpiece. That's the thing that's happening on Instagram proper. What is your best foot forward? What is the glossiest thing that you can create? What's the hero image that you can put out day in and day out that people can look at that will make them excited to interact with your brand? What I'm seeing a lot is people go, well, I got to do this Instagram thing. Da dunk. I've got a photo up. I did that Instagram thing. Or I got to do that Instagram thing. Da dunk. Turn it into an ad and say 99% off or right now it's a dollar or whatever. Neither one of those things is exciting to the consumer. One of the things that we talk about on this show and other shows all the time is that we have to flip it and we've got to focus on what the user wants. We want to make content for what users want to consume and that's how we get them into these platforms and get them to interact with your brand. So if Instagram is essentially the centerpiece of the three branches of Instagram, so that's your hero image, what happens on the other phases? Let's start with one that we've been talking about and one that we know, one that we went to Facebook and asked them about not three weeks ago, and that's Instagram stories. It still is, in my opinion, the place that you can do the less glossy version of your brand, the behind the scenes looks, the things that they don't see when you're taking that hero image, the things that they don't see when the book comes out, when the show comes out, when the movie comes out. Those sorts of things are what people want to consume in story form. And maybe you're new to Instagram stories, for, so for real quick, I'll give you some context. That is um, at the very top of your Instagram platform. It's where you can take 15-second videos or photos and put them in a story, and then people can watch them all at once, right? Um, the issue is, and this is one of the things that they talked about when we went to Facebook, is a lot of people are doing those stories one thing at a time. So they get up in the morning, and, and I've been guilty of this too. You get up and you go, hey, it's Tuesday, Ta-da! 
and then like three hours later you do another one and two hours later you do another one and then you do seven in a row and then four hours later you do another one and then you forget to close it out so the next day you close it out and that's your story. This is a lot like if it's a children's book that you're giving to a child one page at a time. So if I were to go upstairs right now and read a children's book to put my kids to sleep but I only read them a page tonight and they said, hey, so Pete the Cat will be back tomorrow. We'll tell you what happens with him and his guitar tomorrow. You good with that? The two and a half year old, not going to be so good with that. So why should we be creating Instagram stories that we're expecting our consumer to come back again and again and again and again and again as if what we're doing is so interesting? And the way I can prove that to you is take your last story, whatever you did, and I want you to look at the metrics from the first story to the second part of the story to the third part of the story and so forth. If you did eight, go all the way to the eighth one. And so let's start. Let's say at the beginning, you get 100 people to watch that first cell. And then by the end of it, you have six people watching the eighth cell. That story wasn't that interesting. We obviously wanted to go the other direction. We wanted to start at 100 and end at some larger number or stay at 100. Right? You want to keep ramping up. You don't want to go down. There is naturally going to be some dip. Right, You're not going to have people getting more interested in the middle of your story or whatever. But the bigger the drop off from cell one to cell two, the less you have them, the less attention you have grabbed. So the way to combat that, right, is not by going, let's put out the good morning thing tomorrow morning on Tuesday. And then two hours later, we'll do another one. That's a surefire way to go from 110 people watching the first one to eight people watching the second one. Instead, record the whole thing not all at once, record the whole thing as a story and then put it all out there, all the parts and pieces out there at once so that when someone interacts with your brand on the story part of Instagram, they can consume the whole story because expecting them to come back eight times in a single day is just not the way that people consume Instagram. I'm not that interesting. You're not that interesting. They're not that interesting. So if you take it and put it all together as one, and put it out there, you're going to see your metrics go up because people consume the story all at once. Same thing would work on Snapchat. If you put the whole story up, your metrics will go up because people can get the beginning, middle, and end of the story. They're not getting a children's book one page at a time, so they want to spend more time with that interesting story. Which brings us to Instagram TV. It was launched last week. Three weeks prior to last week, they brought in a whole bunch of creators, a lot of them from YouTube. If you're in the entrepreneurial marketing world, Gary V, not a YouTuber per se, but certainly in the YouTube ecosystem, those guys were all brought in to play on the platform for three weeks so that when it launched, there was a whole bunch of content. But what you saw right at launch, there was a whole bunch of greatest hits. So a lot of things that you might have consumed before if you've consumed a lot of YouTube content from whomever, Ninja, Kim Kardashian, Gary Vee, whatever. A lot of greatest hits. But what they're trying to do on the consumer side is they're trying to create a monetization platform that's similar to what YouTube used to be before, and you can Google this, I'm not going to jump into this today, uh, when the uh, monetization apocalypse happened on YouTube and a lot of the YouTube content creators either went to Twitch or went to Instagram Stories, wherever they went, Um, They left because the the platform wasn't paying them for what they thought they were going to get paid as a creator. And there was a big to-do. You can Google it and read all about it. Instagram is trying to be an answer to that with Instagram TV. And the thing that I've been saying for the last five days, and I want to say it again here, is they didn't name it Instagram TV by accident. They named it that because they want it to be different than your Instagram story. They do not want you to take your Instagram story and tape it together and move it over here because that's similar to the same people that will put Facebook content up and just dump it on Twitter. There's no reason to follow that brand on those two platforms because they're just serving the same thing in both places. Just pick one and you'll be fine. It's a much better best practice to have a Facebook strategy and a Twitter strategy, not a Facebook strategy that you jam into the Twitter sphere. It's not how you want to do it. Same thing here. You don't want to have an Instagram story strategy that you jam into Instagram TV. Those things aren't going to work. Instagram TV needs to be serialized. So you've got to have a story that runs through what you're doing on that channel. And right now, they're going to open it up to about an hour 
uh, it'll be really interesting to see how this works. And I'll get into the, the aesthetics of Instagram TV in just a second. But they're going to open it to an hour. Right now, I have access to five minutes. I think there's a difference between... Um, your partner status with Facebook and Instagram as to how long you can put content up. But right now, let's call it five minutes. So you're putting up a vlog for five minutes on Instagram TV. That means it needs to have an intro. So I did two without one and then put one up this weekend with one. You've got to up the production value so it looks different than what was going on in Instagram stories. And I would recommend storyboarding that out. I mean, you know, we storyboard out the podcasts that turn into Facebook Lives, like we write some notes out. There are obviously no shots on this piece of paper that I showed you. I'll show you two one more time so you don't think I'm trying to hide it for you. I'll put it up on Instagram as well if you want to actually read the notes. But I sketch out what I'm going to talk about and maybe I look down, maybe I don't, but I have it here if I need it. And the same thing for your Instagram TV. What are you going to be saying and what sort of shots do you want? I think this is becoming really, really fascinating and super important specific to Instagram TV. I was having this conversation today with Nick Bailing. We talked about Instagram with him last week. We were talking about how the aesthetic of shooting the way we're shooting right now, right? So there's a lot of white space around me that I can fill with a whole bunch of stuff. I've got the Funko Pops back here. I've got posters. So there's a lot of eye candy for you to look at. So it makes the shot interesting. I don't know what this is going to do to Facebook Live, but for the sake of the experiment... If I turn it like this and I hold it like this, the shot becomes way less interesting in the long tail. Meaning if I did this for a long time, you would not like it very much and it becomes kind of boring. So, we'll let Facebook Live reset itself. When you're shooting Instagram TV, right now there's this crisis of aesthetic. Meaning you have to relearn how to shoot Instagram TV because it's different than what you're doing for YouTube and Facebook or TV in particular, right? The high def widescreen stuff, that's great. You can put a whole bunch of stuff in the shot to make it interesting. When you turn it the way people are natively using their phone, and that's what Instagram's leaning into, it's native to the way that people are using the phone. YouTube is not native to the way that people are using their phone because when they turn it like this, what do they see? They see the HD widescreen thing in the middle of the screen and a whole bunch of black space above and below. Instagram TV is not like that. It fills the whole screen. So you've got to pay really close attention. And this is something that we're going to be playing with all week and and probably much further on as to what that aesthetic looks like. Do you need to invest in wireless lav mics so that you can be much farther away so I can back up way to the corner of this room to give it some depth if I turn it like this so I'm not continually doing a selfie show because again visually that won't work for very long what does that stuff have to look like how much of it should be voiceover how much of it should be beauty b-roll shots with music what should that stuff look like in five minutes and how can I keep your attention the aesthetic of Instagram TV is the thing that I'm fascinated with right now because again it's native to the consumer It's not native to the creator. Creators for all, I mean, as long as we've been creating on YouTube and Facebook, we've been told that what we need to do is shoot. How many times have you seen a video on Facebook that your grandmother shot like this? And you're like, Grandma, just take the thing and turn it this way. And that's how you'll fill up the screen on Facebook. We're doing that in reverse now. We've been shooting and and understanding the native way to shoot. But now we've got to do better storytelling with the area around us that now shrunk because it's not as wide when you turn it native to the way that the phone is using uh, Instagram TV. So, uh, again, if we're talking about the three branches of Instagram, it's Instagram proper, Instagram stories, and Instagram TV. And the one thing that I haven't really talked about is Instagram Live. And I haven't really talked about Instagram Live because it's not something that's caught on. That's not to say it won't catch on. Sorry, my nose is itching. Uh, that's not to say it won't catch on, but it ju- you have not seen in the Instagram feed, you have not seen video be very successful at all because that's just not where people's brain is when they're doing this. When they're scrolling up with their thumb, they're not looking to stop on a one-minute video. They're, they're just not. So they usually scroll right past it unless it's amazing, right? Unless it grabs their attention. And that's a rarity, especially in the news feed, which is why... If you go to your Instagram uh, account right now, you will see uh, a giant banner at the top of the app that will tell you which one of your friends has an Instagram TV episode out. So you can check that out because they want to get you used to the fact that 
as a creator, it's a standalone app. As a consumer, you can get it all in the Instagram space. And then right below that, what's there? The stories, the other place that video is killing. Those two places video is killing. In the feed itself, in Instagram proper, not so much. And so when we're talking about Instagram Live, which shows up in your story, I just don't know that we're seeing, I have not seen a lot of case studies, and if you have one, I'd love to read it. I've not seen a lot of case studies of success with brands using Instagram Live because we're just not there yet. Again, not to say that we won't be, but I wonder in the same way that you six months ago would get a whole bunch more traction on what I'm doing right now on Facebook Live than I'm currently getting, I'm wondering if doubling down on Instagram TV and doubling down on highly produced video that you put native to the way in which the phone is used won't gain you more fruit than trying to do Instagram Live right now. Now, if you've been in either one of these algorithms, Facebook or Instagram, which can be the same from time to time, if you've been in either single one of them, you know that it changes often, sometimes in the same day. So, what I'm saying right now, especially about Instagram Live, might change next week if they change their priorities. But their priority right now is to get people to use and be in Instagram TV, which is why for the last six days I've told you to play in the space because now is the time to jump in there and experiment. And for those of you who have been having conversations with me, I found them extremely valuable because when we've got a bunch of people experimenting in the space, the knowledge level goes up much faster than one person doing it or two people doing it. So now is still the time. It's not even a week old. It won't be a week old for another 48 hours. So if you haven't even downloaded it, download it and start watching and see what they're doing. And you'll find out that this aesthetic that I'm talking about, no one has really cracked that code yet because it's difficult to tell a story this way aesthetically. You can do selfie stick stuff all day long, but I'm going to tell you from a serialized perspective, meaning episode after episode after episode, you're not going to keep people's attention. You've got to figure out a different way to tell a story and a different way to fill that beauty B-roll when you take the phone from a horizon or a horizontal view to a vertical native mobile view. It's a way different way to tell a story. All right. As always, if you've got questions, it's Eric at MLive. We will be back on Wednesday with another episode of Everything is Marketing. Talk to you soon. All right, so if we're on Facebook Live, I will jump on and see if there are any questions. All right, we've got one question that I want to get into. My issue is when to do what app, where, and with limited resources, how to use both. That is an awesome question, Travis. What I would say, and that's why I've been talking about Instagram so much, is that maybe you just live in the Instagram app for now. If what you're doing, and specific, I I happen to know Travis, so specific to what Travis is doing with the wrestling videos and the clinics and the tutorials, I think between Instagram TV stories and Instagram proper, you might just want to play in that space. Because who you're going after, which is a younger, more athletic demographic, they are all currently on Instagram. So your strategy might look like this. Tomorrow, it's a photo on Instagram. Some awesome toss from wrestling or takedown or whatever. Instagram story is all the stuff that you're doing behind the scenes, getting ready for practice, writing out how people are training, all that sort of stuff. Then Instagram TV, once or twice a week, you're making an episode talking about what's happening at the gym slash dojo that you're training at. And then you just repeat that ecosystem over and over and over again. The one thing I would say and this is what we're, we've been seeing for the last six or seven days specific to adding another part to the app. So Instagram, Instagram Stories, and Instagram TV is if you neglect Instagram proper, it hurts your analytics on the other two. They really want you to use all three in tandem. And so your strategy has to include all three as of right now. So posting on Instagram, then Instagram Stories and IGTV seems to be the winning combination right this very second according to the algorithm at Instagram. And I think that's intentional because they want people like you, Travis, to understand that you don't have to do this thing where you're splitting time between stuff on Facebook and stuff on Instagram. You could do world building just on Instagram. So I hope that answers that question. Uh, But that's what I would do. If you're interested in Instagram, take a break for a second on Facebook and, and double down on that strategy and see what's happening, especially if you've got limited resources and a highly visual product, both of which you have. All right.
check for more questions. All right, friends, um, I don't know if I'll do another Facebook Live this week, but the other experiment that we've been doing, I, I will just let you know, is we've been doing um, some AMAs while I'm playing Fortnite on Twitch because I'm still trying to play in that space because I'm fascinated by what's going on in Twitch. So we'll do another one of those Thursday or Friday. It's usually around 9 or 10 o'clock Eastern time. So if you want to jump on Twitch and watch me get my ass kicked at Fortnite and ask me questions, you can do that as well. But until then, have an awesome night. We'll talk soon. Take care, guys.